Well, hi there. You join me on an unusually bright, sunny day here in South Wales to look at the Hoover Commercial C1417. Got a few bits to do on this, so let's crack on. <laughs> First of all, before we go any further, I must address Switchgate. Now, <laughs> as I explained in the text of the last video where we unboxed the 1417, I had in my mind constantly, it's the same as the 1409. It's the same as the 1409. It is absolutely not the same as the 1409, as we later found. So after hunting for about six hours, I finally found the switch and it's up here. Look. It's hidden away, hidden away on the, the top of the handle. I mean, you know, if they're going to make something so small and so hard to find, well, I can't be held responsible for my actions. But in my defence, I do say that quite a lot. In my defence, if you look here on the side of the body, there's actually the moulding for the switch. I'm, I'm going to bring you in now. Let's just take a closer look at this. Now there we go, look, there's a moulding here in this back panel um, and it quite clearly says off, zero and one for on. And look, if you, if you move the switch on the top of the handle, you see that moves in the back body. So when I first looked at this and didn't look up the top, I thought, oh, the switch knob should be here. It should be at this point, so you can slide it up and down to turn the machine on and off. And I didn't realise that the switch is up there, that on this one, this bar runs all the way up to the top of the handle. Um, and yeah, you don't do it, you do it on the handle. But, you know, I saw this, I was mistaken, and I am ashamed of myself. So now that we have addressed Switchgate, and uh, I am suitably chastised, and thank you everyone for... Um, commenting on the original video to say the switch is on the handle. God, what an idiot. But anyway, that's over with now. We'll draw a line under that. And in this video, we will get inside the uh, 1417 because I don't think it was sounding as good as it should do. I mean, sounding good is a relative term. I don't think this machine will ever sound fantastic but we can certainly make it sound better than it already does. Now, <coughs> oh, excuse me, full di disclosure, I have already looked at the brush roll. Um, I, I was bored one evening and I was, well, I say I was bored, I was very stressed with work actually. And my stress relief is to come into the workshop and just fiddle with a vacuum cleaner and just, you know, it makes me feel much, much better. So I took the brush roll out um, and I serviced it. So the brush roll is much better now. It's much freer. Um, the bearings are a little bit worn, not overly terrible, I would say, um, but certainly better than what it was when it first turned up. Can I also say, this furniture guard, oh, it's kind of like it's not on correctly. Now, this is really annoying because it's it has multiple little tiny tiny little bits of molding on the, the back of this guard which slide up uh, and hook into the hood it's almost impossible to get this back on properly uh, and you I know you're going to say to me what are you talking about it's a furniture guard of course you, you can put it back on but it's, it's got the same deal around the entire edge. It's all these tiny little, um, I don't know what you call them really, they're almost like pegs, but, but they're part of the, the moulding of the furniture guard and you've got to get them all in at the same time. If you don't get them all in at the same time, if you get one in, it pulls the other one out. I was here for about 30 minutes, honestly, 30 minutes trying to get this back on the front of the cleaner. So whatever you do, if you take anything away from this video, never, ever take the, the furniture guard off because you'll never get it back on. So yeah, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Leave it alone. I'm going to leave it like this. It, it's, it's fine. I just, I just won't look at it. Um, it should be flush with the hood, but 
like yeah all right whatever so first thing we need to do um, is take this machine apart um, and this is re relatively easy actually um, I will say for these that's the one good thing <laughs> about this cleaner you can take it apart very quickly so let's crack on with that now and the first stage of the disassembly process is to remove the back body from the chassis. Um, this is really, really easy. You just take up the hose like that. Um, there is under here a screw. So we just need to undo the screw and there's a nut behind it. So hopefully we can do this quite quickly. There we go. So the nut comes out like so. And now we push that screw out. And oh, come on. <clears throat> there we are. So there's our nut and our screw. Let's put those together, keep them separately. And then <clears throat> we put the handle up. We should be able to wiggle the back body, there we go, off the machine. So now we have two separate parts of um, Hoover Commercial. So that's good. Nice and quick that down there actually no I'm gonna put it over here I don't want to break that uh, tool caddy again it's slightly awkward to make it stand up but yeah it won't stand up basically there we go I've got it it's all right it's fine and now we can start looking at this now because I've been in here previously I've got a question for our American viewers let's just get the hood off because um, there's something going on in here which I'm not sure was correct So undo those two screws, like so. Now you can remove the base plate now, but you don't need to. Um, if, you, if you're just going in for, for the motor, leave this base plate in there. And can I just say what a stupid idea this is? I've, I've, just, I've, I've just remembered how bad this is, because in order to change the belt, you've got to take off those two screws, take off the base plate, turn the machine over, remove the hood, so it should come off relatively easily, he says. Yep. Oh, come on. There you go. So the hood comes off to reveal the insides. Like that. So now you can change the belt. But you've got to take the whole thing apart. Wouldn't it just been easier just to have a like a base plate where you could just get to the belt? Ugh, I don't know. Anyway. But yeah, the question I've got for our US viewers is, look at this, right? Look at look how the motor's held down. Hopefully you can see that. I can't see very much because the sun is right on the camera. Yeah, there we go. Look at this, look. So we've got this bit here that's holding this end, end of the motor down, but that can't be right, can it? Is that right? Can you see it there? Look at that. Is that how it left the factory, guys? Just like it, look, it looks like someone's just made it up. That's mental. Or has it? Oh, I think actually. Oh, I think I can see what's happened now. Yeah, I think I can see what's happened because um, actually those screws. Oh, no, I was going to say those screws are not in the original holes, but oh, I don't know. But this just looks so wrong. Look at it. That can't, no. This side looks fine. Look, we've got a, like a normal kind of bracket there that's holding that end on, but that end, oh, I just don't know. What do you think? Is that is that how it left the factory? I'd be very surprised if it was. Anyway, let's just whip this out. Those two screws come off, and then we should be able to. Oh no, there's three because that's one. Ah, okay. There we are. Yes, yeah, so that's like one one unit there where the hose goes in. So let's put that over there, and now let's undo this very strange arrangement. Oh God. Oh. I kind of feel that that's not right. If you see what I mean, but it doesn't. Look. If it was going to go on like that, it would go on like that, wouldn't it? If I just take those screws out. Yeah, I kind of feel that it would be... 
but even that doesn't feel right. This this feels too small. This piece feels too small to go on here. Uh, it's really odd. But yeah, you guys tell me if that's right or not, because I, I genuinely don't know. It's quite flexible. Hmm, odd. Okay, so now we should be able to take the motor unit out, and there we go. So that's the that's the heart of our commercial. This um this motor unit. And now we've got to try and get this apart. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever done it. So yeah, let's try and get in here. Here's the, here's the chassis. That's all fine. Again, think about the date stamps, but no, it's got 26 stamped there. But I don't know what that means. But no, there's no date stamps on it, which is a real shame. It would have been nice to have dated it accurately. I, I do, I, I still think it's approximately year 2000, but uh, yeah, not sure. Okay, I need to change the camera around a bit so we can get a better look at this motor. Now our next task is to get inside this. I, to, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't feel too bad. I think we might get away with just lubricating the bearings, but let's take this fan case off because I've just got a feeling that maybe the fan is not in the best of conditions. So let's, just, let, let's whip this off a sec. Okay, that's the screws out. Some of those are really tight. Now this should just pull apart, I think. And we've got a, a bit of a rubber seal up here, so we've got to be careful of that. So let's just get that out. There we go. And then that exposes the fan. And there's our fan. Now this is looking a bit... Yeah, it's not the best, is it? God, this has done some work. It's actually got... <laughs> I did use it briefly. And look, the cat hair has got stuck in the fan. I wonder, I wonder if we can do something with this. I don't really want to put a new fan on it. This is, this is a turbo power fan, by the way. This is, it, it's nothing special. Um, yeah, I don't know. can you see there as well? It's got like a, like a chunk taken out of it. Can you see that? It's like a indentation in the side of the fan. It's, it's not brilliant and the, the the training edges of the veins are very, very rough. I suspect this has got something to do with the fact that it doesn't sound particularly wonderful. Let's just see if we can take that off. Can we take the fan off? Again, see, it's covered in, in something like goopy. Um, it, it's, like it's, in, it's like the entire machine has been oiled, but not like the bits you would expect to be oiled. It's like the entire machine that has been oiled, which is very, very odd. Oh, can we get this off? Ow! God, I tell you what, there's some bloody sharp. These these edges are sharp. Ow! Oh, God damn! Ah! <laughs> they actually hurt. If you catch them wrong, they actually hurt. Right, let's take our fan off. Okay. Right, we've got a bit of dust on the back of this. That's well, it's a bit dusty. That shouldn't make much of a difference. Now let's have a quick feel of the bearings. Now those bearings feel absolutely fine. There is a little bit of movement. Can you hear that? Yeah, a little bit of in and out movement is fine because the fan's been taken off. That one, that one's okay. There's nothing going on there. There is a, there is a little, a little bit of movement in that, in, in that bearing, a little bit. It's not terrible. And I think it would quieten down with the fan in place. But yeah, I think we'll call those bearings all right. So whilst we're here, let's just pop some three in one oil on them. I'm just gonna pop it on this one for a minute because the bearing is recessed quite a lot into that housing. So I'm just gonna pop that on like that and I'm gonna leave it to sit for a while. So let's put the motor unit over here, like so. Mustn't forget to uh, look after our spacer. Don't want to lose that. See, get look. Can you see that? But it's like it's like it's been greased. It's ever so strange. But not just this bit. I mean, okay, yeah, you, you kind of expect that to be greased because that's the bit that's rotating on the pivot. But the everything else is like covered in this oil. It's very odd. I just need to wipe my wipe my hands. It's, ugh, nasty. So then we're left with the question of this fan. Now, as I, as I mentioned, this is essentially a turbo power fan, um, but it's actually made of harder material. Um, the turbo power fan will have a little bit of flex in it, 
but this is harder. It's a, it's a, it's a harder plastic. And I've got an idea. I've got an idea. If we look at the, if we look at the fan like this, how bad is it? Yeah, it is quite bad. I think I'm going to give it a go with the um, Dremel and the little sanding uh, disc, uh, not the disc, the little sanding drum. And I'm going to see if I can like just sand off these rough edges and just make this fan a little bit more even. So let's give that a go. Well, I've got my Dremel in quote marks. It's not an actual Dremel. It's just a, it's a cheapo copy version. I think I bought it from Lidl. So I'm just going to give this a go now. I'm just going to try and reshape these fan, fan blades. It's not going to be the most interesting thing for you to watch, but uh, yeah, let's see what we can do here. Okay, well, that's our attempt at it. And uh, if I hold it up to the camera, hopefully you can now see that um, actually it is much smoother. So the trailing edge of the fan, of the veins, that one's not particularly brilliant. Of course, that's the one I show you, isn't it? But it is, it's, you know, it's smoothed off. It's, it's, it's better than it was. Uh, and yeah, this is just doing it by hand for heaven's sake. If you wanted to balance it, then you'd use a machine. Um, and where it had the, um, I think it was this side, but there's a slight indentation there where something's hit the fan. On the opposite side, I've just taken out a little bit of the plastic there. So just to like balance it up. So either side has a has a balance to it. But uh, yeah, I think we'll what we'll do is we'll pop, pop it pop it back in the machine and see what happens. I mean, we're not going to make it any worse. Uh, chances are it'll be better, but uh, yeah, let's get that motor back together. Well, I oiled this bearing before putting this back on. Um, and as you can see, the fan is now back on the motor. Uh, let's get the casing back on. Just take that rubber seal out of the way a minute. There we go. And now pop the seal on. That's what I should have done previously. <laughs> I should have taken that seal off, shouldn't I, before forcing it? There we go. Uh, I'm just going to wipe this off. It's just, it's really annoying me now. This ugh, grease that's all over the damn thing. All right, let's pop this. I've got to be careful now. Um, I'm, I'm going to do these by hand, actually, because the fan case is starting to break. Um, and I don't want to be too rough with it. The drill might be a bit too rough. So just let me do these by hand a second. Good. So that's that done up. Let's get rid of that cat hair that's still stuck on the fan. And put this ring back in. Um, cool. Now let's get the chassis up. And we should be able to pop this back together relatively quickly. So let's do that now.
Okay, let's leave it at that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not overly happy with this arrangement, but I, I'm not sure what I can do about it because that's how the machine came. Um, yeah, you, you guys will tell me if that's right or not. If it's not right, then I, I might try and sort of fashion something else that uh, that works a bit better than this because this is not ideal. But yeah, there we go. We shall see. We'll see what happens. Right, okay, let's crack on. Oh, my hands are covered in goop. It's horrible. Good, well that's the chassis uh, and motor hood unit um, back together. So let's reset up and get the back body back on. We're almost there. We are getting there. We're doing it. Okay, so now we need the back body, which is here. Let's get this on. Let's switch in the right place. Oh yeah, that's one of my dear viewers did rightly point out the switch is not on the handle actually technically the switch is down here um it's sort of like down there and it's uh, it's moved by that that piece of plastic you see that piece of plastic there that's what moves up and down and um activates the switch so that's where the actual switch is um, the, the bit on the handle is just a mechanical method of operating the switch now are you going to go on yes you are thank you Let's get this flipping great screw in. And Mr. Nut, I'm gonna do this by hand. That wasn't me, that was the chair. <laughs> okay, good. Well, there we are, the machine's back together. Now, you know, I will say, pretty flipping quick to get it all apart, and get it all back together again, considering some of the machines we've seen on this channel, which have been an absolute flipping nightmare. That's really quick. That's really quick and easy. But the proof, as they always say, is in the puddling. And we're going to see what puddling 
you've got now. Oh, there was one thing I forgot to mention. Do you remember in the original unboxing video, when I um, switched the machine to tools mode uh, to use the, use the hose, there was very little suction on it. It was like, like that. It was, it was virtually nothing. And I thought, oh, it's, maybe it's blocked. Maybe the hose is blocked. But I put it on the bench rack and it, was, it didn't really make much difference to it. And I thought, all right, well, I'll just send like a marble through the hose just to like go through and see if it comes out the other side. Sent the marble through, didn't come out. And I'm like, well, that's weird, isn't it? How? It's, it's almost as if it's blocked, but not blocked. How is that even possible? So I faffed around for ages and it was ages, it was ridiculous. And in the end, what came out of the hose was this. And it's like, as if you can see that, it's, it's a walnut shell, a part of a walnut shell. So what was happening is, if you imagine the hose is like running that way, sometimes the walnut shell would be like that and the airflow would go over. Sometimes the walnut shell would be like that and it would block the airflow. So it was like acting like a valve with inside the hose. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's really weird, but yeah, there was this <laughs> part of a walnut shell within the hose, and that's what was causing the problem. <sighs> Just to say, I've done one little upgrade on the machine, and that is this. So this will serve us so much better than what we had originally. Originally, the machine had this um, one quarter full high filtration paper bag in it. Now, as we all know, paper is just so, oh, it's just so last century. <laughs> but interestingly, this is, this is the, the proper bag for this cleaner. Um, I thought it was a Turbo Power 2 bag, but no, it's not. It says high filtration paper bag. You probably can't see that because of the sun. High filtration paper bag, suitable for Hoover commercial uprights. This high filtration paper bag is manufactured from unbleached paper, which benefits the environment. The special paper helps prevent 99.1% of microscopic dust, 0.3 microns, uh, recirculating during vacuum cleaning. Especially suitable for suffer sufferers of asthma or dust related allergies, recommended for all carpet cleaning areas and especially hospitals, nursing homes and residential centres. Contact Hoover Commercial for details. 01204 361 808. I, I, I wonder if that phone number still works. Hoover Commercial Genuine Parts. Oh, that's really cool. I've never seen that before. I think that's really, it's really quite cool. I've honestly never seen a Hoover Commercial paper bag like that. That's, I, I might keep this. <laughs> I know it's sad, it's sad, isn't it? It's sad, bless his heart. He's got no life, no friends. I might keep it just because it's quite cool. Um, Hoover Commercial High Filtration Paper Bag. How many of those do you see? None. Anyway, I've put a Pneumatic Henry HEPA Flow Bag in it. And they, 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 they just fit. They just fit. If you take the... Uh, rubber membrane out of the bag and you kind of like snip the um, the cloth that kind of goes past the opening the round opening you can you can work it on to the machine's bag throat and oh my god what a difference what a difference it makes it is unbelievable so with all that being said and happening it is time for us to try our 14. I hate that switch. I genuinely I hate that switch. It just mocks me. It just <laughs> mocks me. Didn't sound too bad, did it? You know what? Sort it. I'm gonna turn it on here. I've got my screwdriver. I've got my screwdriver. I'm gonna turn it on here. You ready?
that does sound much better actually it does sound much better if you can compare that to what it was when it first turned up that is better it's it is mainly the brush roll actually it's mainly the brush roll that's making the making the noise um the motor sounds great and i think doing that with the fan actually did help that's the first time i've ever done that it just kind of occurred to me one night whilst i was lying in bed cold and lonely and I thought, could you could you reshape the veins on the fan? And yeah, you can, you can do it. Um, I'm genuinely surprised there. So I didn't think that would make that much difference, but it actually has. The, the vibration from the motors has, has gone down and um, oil in the bearings obviously helps too. But yeah, that's quite good. Still, the tool suction is just rubbish. It's just so rubbish. But whilst the machine's running, if you hold your hand under here, don't don't stick it in there because the brush rolls there and you lose your fingers. But you can feel a lot of airflow. That there is a massive amount of airflow at that point. But by the time the poor thing has had to root it all through that little tiny hose, and to be fair to it, the internal diameter of the hose is really tiny. It's like one and a half centimeters. It looks it looks thicker than that from the outside but the actual inside dimension and also um, like how it joins to the, to, the, to the machine end and the hose end, again, that also restricts the um, diameter of the hose. So I'm not gonna be too mean to it over that. It, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not great, it's not brilliant. You could use it to do your dusting that's about it. It's not going to really pick up anything major. So I think that's it, actually. I think we have now basically restored the 1417. I'm going to give it a little bit of a clean and a polish. Um, in the next video, maybe not the next video, but the next video that's made with this cleaner, we'll do a comparison between this and the 1409. So I think that would be quite interesting to see. I know I, I covered it briefly in the unboxing video but I think there's more detail we could go into on that and it would be interesting to see both machines being used at the same time as well. So yeah that's my plan, that's my intention. Um, but yeah until then thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to do the usual commenting, subscribing and liking because it really helps me out and I appreciate it massively and uh, it just sort of encourages me to make these videos because I enjoy doing it for you. And that's pretty much the only reason I do it. Don't earn much money from them. So yeah, there we go. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy doing it and I always love to hear from you. So yeah, until next time, you guys take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.